Okay, we're live. Welcome in, everybody. We're going to let the stream breathe just for a second. We want to make sure it's nice and stable for you, our great audience and community. Welcome in to the Huddle Up podcast presented, as always, by Mile High Huddle, powered by Overtime Media. I'm your host, Chad Jensen, and with me, as always, my partner in crime. You know him. You love him. He is Zach Kelberman. Zach, it's kind of been... I don't know about you, what you're seeing on your side, but it's been a really quiet day, not just in terms of news, but very little, very few social media interactions. Traffic numbers are a little bit down at (laughs) milehighhuddle.com. Not that it's anything to worry about, but it seems like maybe fans are overloaded, if it's even possible, on NFL, taking a little bit of a break, kind of like a postpartum, post-draft depression maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely feel you on the traffic end, Chad. It's been like last couple of days, no news. And after the draft, there's a lull now. Whereas in a norm, normal year, a normal May, there'd be OTAs, there'd be mini camps, there'd be gatherings on the field. We just don't have any of that right now and really no end in sight. I think the majority of football fans and people in general, humans, are focused on the issue that shall go unnamed and when that's going to end and getting back to normal. And then we can start putting pro sports back in the eye. But with facilities opening up tomorrow, hopefully for you and for me and collectively, the page views come back, the interest comes back, hopefully have more to talk about. So this should be the worst of it, Chad, going forward. I don't want to give our competition any insights into how we roll at MHH, but as an example of what Zach's talking about in terms of us being content creators and covering this team, even when they show up to OTAs, like traditional NFL calendar, You know, there's not a whole lot happening. It's basically walkthrough level practices, a lot of team meetings behind closed doors that we as media aren't privy to. But then they make multiple players and coaches available to media after each event for, you know, usually it's two or three day period in a row. We could speak to each of the last OTAs, two, three years that you and I have been working together, Zach, and we would take those quotes. We would get a Google Doc together and we would pull out little storylines from each quote and just kind of set up a docket of stories we want to jump on. Sometimes as many as three guys could stand up and talk, and we could pull out 15 or 16 different storylines that would be individual articles that we want to cover that would get us through kind of this lull, this period in between the draft and training camp opening. And we just don't have that this year. I don't know that we will get that this year, even though things are beginning to move towards opening like we talked about yesterday. They have the one thing we will have, though, regardless, new news, no news, is the Huddle Up Pod. And we're going to continue right. coming on, hopping on here every single day for you guys and the interaction and the comments. So hopefully as we go forward, like I said, we have more to talk about. But, Chad, you and I will always find a way, and our great, great listeners will always keep our brains working to try to spin out some content. Word. You know what, though? You brought something up about Tuesday, which we we touched on on yesterday's pod, that the NFL is allowing teams to begin the to send employees back to facilities uh, tomorrow. The Broncos, of course, are going to take a week to get all their safety ducks in a row before bringing back John Elway and the, the scouting staff, the executives and whatnot. The coaches, though, here's one of the hurdles that actually hit home for me today that I kind of looked past yesterday is the fact that because different states have different rules right now, some states, teams, depending on the state, like in New York, for example, okay, you got the Jets, you got the Giants, you got the Bills. None of those teams on Tuesday, just because the NFL says it's okay to go back, none of those teams are allowed by their current state strictures to go back to work. Mm-hmm. They can't. It's they're, it's against, I don't know if it's necessarily a law, but it's whatever executive authority those respective governors have put in place, they can't go back to work yet. And so what that means is even in places like Colorado where they can go back to work, the coaches and players in the state of Colorado, they can return to facilities the nfl has to maintain competitive balance across the league so until all teams can reconvene no teams in terms of players and coaches can return to facilities so that's something to keep an eye on yeah and that's why i'm saying i'm not worried about the lack of an offseason for for a lock or for the broncos because every other nfl team is on the same playing field there's all going to be some sort of rust or some sort of reacclimation period to get back into football shape it's not easy it's not just getting off the couch and going on the field. There's a lot that has to be done until then. Hopefully we can move toward that, but nothing is stopping technically. If Colorado, you know, agrees, nothing is stopping Locke from meeting up and having a throwing session, uh, working 
socially distanced with his receivers and, and maintaining a safe but responsible uh, work environment for him and his, his cohorts. Good point. Good point. Today, you guys, we have a couple of storylines that we did want to touch on that kind of came up Monday. We're going to get to those here in just a second. One includes Royce Freeman. The other one includes the Honey Badger, Teron Matthew, throwing some, I think, good-natured shade at Drew Locke, giving him a compliment while also throwing a little shade his way. We're going to get to both those topics here in just one second. First, we want to say hello to those of you who have been hanging out in the stream. Yes. Welcome in Darville, Toy Mafia, Buona so, Beast, what's going on, so, Stony, so. Big E. It's good to see all of you guys. We want to make sure you know how to connect with us. This show is growing exponentially on a week-in and week-out basis, even though no games are being played right now and the draft is now almost, well, three weeks in the rear view. This show continues to grow. We want our new listeners to know how to connect with us. Make sure you're following the show on Twitter, at HuddleUpPod. That's how you keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening with this show in real time. And then while you're at it, make sure you also follow the main account on Twitter, at MileHighHuddle. Also, if you're in a position, you want to check out HuddleUpPod.com and get yourself one of these hats or get yourself an MHH face mask or a hoodie or a T-shirt or a mug. If you're in a position, everyone's situation is unique. A lot of people have been put behind the financial eight ball right now, so definitely don't take this as a call to action. Only if you're in a position to go to HuddleUpPod.com, get your swag on, and when you do, when you receive your product, when you receive your merch, Make sure you reach out to us, whether you send us an email, milehighhuddle at gmail.com, Twitter, Facebook, DM us, whatever. Reach out, send us a selfie with your swag so that we can shout you out and, and give you some love on our social media. And then, you know what? If you're not in a position to do any of those things, it's all good. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this video if you, if you uh, appreciate what we're doing, bringing you this content on a day-in, day-out basis, seven days in a week. You got one podcast for every day in the week. We're not going to stop doing that. So that's one simple, easy, organic thing you can do to support the show is like this video. And if you love it, share it out on your social media. All right, Zach, I want to grab this Royce Freeman story first and foremost. And it was brought to my attention by our friend Luke Patterson, who uh, I guess was listening today to 104.3 The Fan. And I think it was on Orlando and Sandy, the mid-morning show in which Mike Cliss of Nine News appeared and was asked about the running back competition, right? And just kind of how things have changed since 2019 ended. Of course, Devontae Booker, the number three last year, he's out the door. And in is Melvin Gordon, along with the undrafted rookie from Western Michigan, Levante Bellamy. And he was asked basically with regard to Freeman, how he sees, what's his outlook on Freeman? Is he on the bubble? And let me just read this quote to you from, Cliss, and then I want to serve it and get your thoughts. Quote, this is Cliss on Freeman. Quote, he's the number three running back right now, and the number three running back last year was Devontae Booker, who got two carries for nine yards all season. Now, that was a different offensive coordinator, but this offensive coordinator, Shermer, is even more of a one-back guy than Rich Scangarello. Yes, I would say Freeman is on the bubble. Close quote. Zach, would you concur with Cliss that Freeman has to worry a little bit about his place on the roster? I mean, first of all, Cliss admits he's a one back guy, but they give sixteen and a half million dollars to Melvin Gordon when they already have a promo running back on the roster. That's a whole other tangent. I'm not going to get on that, but I do believe Royce Freeman's in danger because they have too many weapons as it is, including in the backfield, including at wide receiver, tight end. You can say the Broncos are stacked. It might be on paper. It might be theoretical upside, but the Broncos have a lot of talent. What does Royce Freeman bring to the table? He's like, at this point, a poor man's version of C.J. Anderson. He's a plodding 3.5 yards per carry running back. He doesn't catch passes. He's okay in pass protection. He doesn't do anything outstanding, I guess, maybe to warrant a roster spot. They have Bellamy. He's more of a, a Philip Lindsay light type of running back. He fits what the Broncos want to do on offense. I could definitely see Freeman being gone, though they're going to need three running backs. He's a veteran. He knows the team. He's familiar with his teammates. He has a leg up, but he's going to be pushed by Bellamy this summer, Chad, and it's no guarantee Freeman's on the 53. I'm really curious, as I wrote about today in the article covering this at milehighhuddle.com, you guys can go check it out when you get some time. I'm really curious to see how Freeman responds because yeah. undoubtedly the move to sign – Melvin Gordon. I mean, we've talked many a time on this podcast about the implications of the Gordon signing on Philip Lindsay, 
But really, the message that was being sent wasn't so much one put in an envelope and mailed to Philip Lindsay. It was a telegraph to, to Royce Freeman. He's the one who's kind of had the shot across the bow. He's the one that might find himself on the outside looking in. So it's no surprise to me to hear a bona fide insider like Cliss say he could be on the roster bubble. Now, as a third round pick, two years removed, I think he'd really kind of have to crap the bed, so to speak, yeah. this summer to officially get the boot. But so much of this is also going to be determined, Zach, by how well he fits within the Shermer scheme. And as we know, not only in that that quote I, I just read from Cliss, that Shermer prioritizes the one back scheme. Very rarely do you see two backs on the field at the same time, but he really likes the running backs, as we've talked about many times on this pod, to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. Now, when Royce Freeman was coming out of Oregon, that wasn't his calling card, right? He was right. he was the between the tackles runner. But the one thing I'll say about Freeman that has surprised me in a positive way since he arrived as a Bronco is he's been a much more smooth receiver than I expected him to be. In fact, that final game of the season as a rookie in 2018, I want to say it was, yeah, because it was the uh, game that Philip Lindsay missed on injured reserve because he had hurt his wrist the, the game before against the Raiders. So that final game of the season, he caught like 10 passes, did Freeman in that final game. So, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean he's a great wide receiver, you know, great receiver out of the backfield, but how well that aspect of his game how, how well he hones that between now and when those decisions are made, I think will have a big impact on what that decision is. But see, that in itself is why I didn't make such a big deal about Philip Lindsay's receiving ability or lack thereof. It's a, it's a, a learnable trait. You can learn to catch passes. You have two hands. They're professional football players. Philip Lindsay could work on his pass catching. They didn't have to hand $16.5 million, again, to Melvin Gordon to function in that role. In, in regards to Royce Freeman, though, yeah, I, I think he has the leg up. Like you said, Chad, he'd have to fall on his face given his draft pedigree to lose that job. Or someone like Bellamy, who can be last year's Kalfani Muhammad, can come by and really force the Broncos to put Freeman off the roster. What I – is the equalizer of special teams. Freeman doesn't play specials. Bellamy, if he shines there as well and shows he can catch passes and have some speed in the backfield, that could force the Broncos' hand. Good point. And John Elway proved two years ago, two summers ago, I'll say, that he is not afraid to cut a recent draft pick. I mean, right. in one summer, he cut a first-round pick, Paxton Lynch, a third-round pick, Brendan Lane. Great point. Yeah. A fifth-round pick, Isaiah McKenzie. You got to dial it back a few years prior to that. He cut Monte Ball, a 2013 second-round pick, at the height of his prime as, a, as an NFL running back. So, Hopefully those facts are not lost on Royce Freeman and he takes this, these two different moves that have been made a running back as a kind of call to action. Real quick, I want to grab this from Darville, who was the first one in the room. Appreciate you, Darville, joining us. He says, Broncos country, I enjoy the shows. Keep up the good work. Just wanted to know, what do you both think about Tyree Cleveland and the other undrafted players? Well, for what it's worth, Cleveland, of course, is not undrafted. He was the seventh round pick of the team. And we like his his raw athletic ability. He has some beast in him, but he's still very, very raw. He's going to take some time to, to uh, develop, and he's going to have to find a way, Zach, to make it through the refiner's fire if he's going to end up cracking this roster at any point in his young career. And then as far as the undrafted guys, you're, we've already talked about one of them, and that's Levante Bellamy's one guy to keep an eye out as a threat to make this roster, plus a Sang Bassey, the, the nickel corner – uh, from Wake Forest, and then uh, what's his name, Douglas Coleman, the safety from Texas Tech. Those were the three guys. Yeah. Maybe also the tackle from Central uh, Arkansas. What's his name? I keep forgetting it. Was it Watts? Mm -hmm. What's Hunter his Watts. name? Thank you. Um, so those those are the guys that I think that have interested us the most. But there was only seven of, the, of them this year because of how many roster spots were truly available for the Broncos. So each one of them kind of has a unique opportunity. I think this year. Yeah, it's true. We, we covered this on a previous pod in, in further detail, but among the undrafted guys, uh, Bellamy has a great shot like we just talked about. Bassey, I think, will make the 53 as the last cornerback. He might move Yadam to safety if he has a nice summer, which I think he will. Coleman could be that third safety, even though it's up for grabs with Trey Marshall right now. Um, and, of course, Bellamy could crack at running back. In terms of Cleveland, though, I'm not overly impressed. We talked about him last night, Chad. I, it's a practice squad guy with room to improve. He has a great receivers coach in Zach Azani. I, I just don't see superstar when I watch his tape. I think he could be a good number four guy, like a like a, a Tim Patrick-type ceiling, but really nothing more than that. 
Yeah, it's going to be fun, though, to see because, I mean, this wide receiver, were, it was kind of slim pickings for the Broncos last year, and now they have a veritable embarrassment of riches. So it's going to be really cool to see how this competition shakes out. We want to tip our cap here to one of our Super Chat superstars, Nad Ludlow, Thank jumping you, in, just showing some love there with the Super Chat. Appreciate you, my friend. And also we want to grab, oh, let's say hi to Steve. He just had his wisdom teeth removed. Yikes. I remember when I had that done. I think I was like 20 or 21 years old. So we're going back a couple decades for, for this cat right here. But that laid me low, dude. For like three days, I was out of it. The medication just down. But fortunately for me, I didn't have, uh, what do they call it? The impacted kind where they have to go a little ex few extra steps, which can be more invasive and take you longer to recover. So Hopefully you didn't have any of those either, Stephen, and recover quickly, my friend. Did you get uh, your wisdom teeth out, Zach? I was going to say you're making my mouth hurt right now, Chad, between that and Stephen's comment. Hopefully, Stephen, the pod makes you feel a little better. Hopefully the painkillers are pretty good. So hope you have a nice night. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have you in the stream, my friend. And King Hicks, good to see you, brother. Manny Wise, Christy's in the house. James Campbell's in the house. Good to see everybody. As, as Buana B said, we got the band back together. That's great. Yes, sir. Let's, uh, let's grab Jeff C. Jumping in. Jeff Cohen, our friend. $2 super. Thank Appreciate you, you, bro. He says, hey, guys, remember, truth is stranger than fiction. That's one of my favorite songs, in fact, from a band called Bad Religion. It's called Stranger Than Fiction, and that's the line. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. That brings us to the Teron Matthew story. Zach, let's grab this really quick. I'll do a, I'll do a share screen here so you guys can see this yourselves in case you missed it. But you have Teron Matthew on Twitter who has over 1.1 million followers, which surprised me when I saw that. But there was a tweet that came from Pete Sweeney basically just talking about how Cortland Sutton uh, said on uh, May 14th, I know y'all have seen the play with Teron Matthew that play is something that did haunt me for a while. I moved on from it to where he basically had a shot at catching a touchdown. Of course, the Broncos were held without scoring a touchdown in that Chiefs game in the snow, and that could have at least broken that ice for him. He was unable to haul it in. Teron Matthews the one that broke it up. And then Matthew, Zach, the honey badger, quote tweeted this tweet here saying, quote, Drew Lott going to be good, but he better stop playing with me. <laughs> in other words, you know, if you try me, I'm, it, it ain't going to work out for you. High praise, though, from a player of of, Math, of Matthew's caliber. I mean, it, it's just funny, though, that actual NFL players on the field are praising Drew Locke and the Broncos, but all the blue checkmark national media types are trashing them. It really goes to show you how deluded the thinking is and how delusional and how off base a lot of the national media, including our counterparts, are, Chad. You know what, though? I think it also shows, and I don't disagree, I think it also shows that Drew Locke has a profile within the players of the NFL, especially those who have come into contact with him. I mean, the, the Chiefs put a beat down on the Broncos in that snow game. Drew Locke actually played pretty well. It was everyone around him just was having an off day, and it's not hard to understand how it could have been an off day with those elements and being on the road in Arrowhead. And, and it's, if you're going to pick a day to not play your best, obviously you want them to rise to the occasion in future in those type of situations. But – Drew Locke did not play poorly. Everyone's seen his kind of swagger that he brings and his confidence and what he did to elevate the Broncos down the stretch going 4-1 and one as a starter. And I think you're seeing also in that tweet from, from Matthew showing some respect, like giving him some props a little bit. He's going to be good. And then playfully, of course, you know, a little competitive trash talking yeah. on social media, which to me is, is great to see because it's not like he's really throwing shade. It's all good-natured, and it's all kind of feeds within the – you know, the Broncos Chiefs rivalry right. zeitgeist. He's keeping the grudge match rivalry going. And you like to see that because for years to come with Locke and Mahomes, it's going to be a fun matchup twice a year, Chad. And to your point, the legend of Drew Locke, as small as it is right now, continues to grow. And it's exciting to see more and more players give him the credit that I think and you think and a lot of fans think he deserves. Michaela jumping in, one of our Super Chat superstars with a $10 super. Thank you. We awesome. appreciate you. It's good to see you. She says, since they're opening the facilities, are we going to have a type of training camp? Michaela, I think you might have missed yesterday's show. I'm not 100% sure. And again, thank you for the super. But we both believe the Broncos, they still have training camp tentatively scheduled. I use the T word there because that's how it's been explained to me. 
for July 28th or 29th. That's when they plan on opening training camp. At this stage, I think all teams are clinging to that. No NFL team has moved off that. Some of these states, Zach, that are still quite locked down. You know, you, you again, you go on a state by state basis. That's one of the great things about the United States and the unique aspects of the U.S. and federalism is every state kind of makes their own rules and are, is an individual and sovereign entity. And so the federal government, even though they're encouraging states to open, they can't necessarily mandate it. That's a state's rights issue. So the NFL has to roll with those punches. My concern, Zach, is you start getting into the dog days of June. You start getting into July. Maybe some of these governors still don't lift their foot off the neck, so to speak, of these, these states that are still closed down. And those teams that are within those states, they're going to have to make a decision. And that trickles, of course, to the NFL front office. Do we travel somewhere where we can open a training camp? I mean, it's teams have done that for a long time. I mean, the Broncos used to travel to Greeley, Colorado, completely away from, from their facilities in Denver. Uh, I want to say the Dallas Cowboys, they travel for training camp, or at least they did in years past. So it's not completely outside the realm of, of tradition if teams end up doing it that way, which is how I expect it to unfold if, in fact, they get to early July and some of these states are still locked down. I would be stunned if there's not a variation of training camps around the country, Trent. Probably with limited fans or no fans, as the case may be. But as you're seeing, it's May 18th and, and training camps in late July. So it's over two months away, and we're already seeing reopenings. Even Gavin Newsom in California, who is one of the more tentative, uh, I don't want to say panic-stricken, but very conservative in his handling of the issue. Even he's saying pro sports can return uh, June 1st with no fans. So training camps in late July, why wouldn't there be a training camp? The only thing I can think of is between now and then another outbreak hits us. Right. I don't so want to use the word. Yeah, yeah. It, if it breaks out again, then I can see training camp not happening. But I guarantee you some form of it will take place this summer. And, well, I don't want to derail this pod on a word that shall go on name tangent, go down that rabbit hole. However, what I will say is the signs are with testing increasing across the country – the good news, the silver lining is that it's basically from a nationwide perspective, new cases is plateauing. So that's good. More people are getting tested and yet it's still. So I'm I'm with you. We maintain our optimistic posture that by the time you get to the end of, of July, it's going to be really dang close to business as usual for the yeah. NFL. So uh, hopefully you share that view with us and uh, let's look at it. Glass half full. And I don't think we're being delusional looking at it that way. Johnny baby jumping in. $10 super. Appreciate you, my Thank friend. You, MHH fam, make sure you smack that like button and support our football priests. Hashtag state of being. Hashtag Denver Broncos for life. You know, we appreciate you, John. Thank you. Good John. to see you. What I wanted uh, to say, though, to tack on your last point is you yeah. can disagree with us on this. Hopefully you guys share the optimism. Just don't drag us for our opinions. If we're being hopeful, we want to be positive. We think there's going to be training camp. We're not encouraging people to act recklessly or irresponsibly. We just have hope that football will be here this summer and this fall. That's right. That had to be said, unfortunately. James, uh, bringing up here, did anyone see the – how do you pronounce that? I, it's soccer. No, it's right? soccer yeah. in, in Europe. Return on Saturday, <laughs> Bundesliga. Bundesliga. Uh, return on Saturday. It's German soccer. Just felt so eerie and surreal because, as he's saying here, for those of you who are listening to this after the fact, 84,000 capacity stadium empty, and yet the competition is still taking place on the field. He says, though, good to see sports return, but if that's how it shakes out, well, it's going to take some adjusting, which, you know what? Again, it will be weird if that is how yeah. – it has to shake out initially, but I think every fan at this stage would rather have something going yes. on, being relegated to watching it on TV or streaming it on a device. You can't be there, unfortunately, than not having anything happening at all. Stole the words right from my mouth, and I'm I'm looking at the glass half full. Even if there's no fans and there's broadcast with no fans in the stands, okay, we'll get to hear more of the player chatter on the field. Hopefully, hopefully they don't pipe in crowd noise, but we'll hear more of what's going on on the sidelines on the field. I just want football in any form, Chad. Fans, no fans, limited, whatever. It's going to be weird, but pro sports, a lack of for two months. We're all dying for it to get back. Amen to that. And Jeff saying here the rumor that. Drew Locke coming back to Denver, if true, is exciting enough news for me today. LOL. 
I hadn't heard that, but I haven't been on Twitter for, uh, I hadn't actually been connected to any of my devices for a little bit. So I was doing a thing with my kids school, of course, schools shut down across the nation, but where I'm at, uh, they did a little kind of remote virtual celebration type thing for kids, uh, with the school year ending. So I'll have to look into that Zach after this. And if you want to check on Twitter, I don't know, but if it's true, it's good news and might be a harbinger of something happening here very soon. Gary jumping in on super with a $2 super. Appreciate you, you, my friend. He says, thanks, Chad and Zach, always entertaining. Thank you. Glad to be of service. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate you. Um, Okay. So here's Steven giving us a little bit more context. Did you guys see that Drew is in Denver? And as soon as restrictions are lifted, he will start throwing with receivers. So that's something I missed. And I'll, I'll have to grab that as a, I'll find the source. If you guys wouldn't mind, tell me the, the source and I'll get a story up on it at Mile High Huddle after this podcast. But again, if it's, if it's true and there's no reason to doubt it at this stage, things are opening up, then yeah, even if the NFL coaches and players aren't allowed yet back at the facilities, there's nothing precluding guys right. like Locke and Sutton and Fant and Jerry Judy and everybody getting together maintaining social responsibility, trying to follow the guidelines and uh, getting some reps in. I think it was Cliss who tweeted it. And yeah, he's back in Colorado from uh, Missouri, from Kansas City. And, uh, you know, it's exciting with the facilities reopening. Again, you're starting to see a little more normalcy. Obviously, he can't go into the facility just yet. But like Chad said, nothing is stopping him from having an informal passing camp where they're still spaced apart. They're still on the field. They're still getting that chemistry down, which will lead and crescendo until training camp begins in late July. Amen. And Buona Beast reminded everybody that we continue to inch closer to the 7,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. And we do plan on doing something really cool, really fun to celebrate that because the number seven, of course, has a very special, unique uh, meaning in Broncos country. So stay tuned. We're getting really close. I think we're within 100 subscribers. So it's going to happen within, I want to say, the next week or so. Uh, And so we'll We'll uh, let you guys in on what we plan on doing to celebrate that. And if you have any suggestions or there's anything in particular on your mind, reach out to us, say the word, drop a comment in the stream, and we'll take it to under consideration. James brings up here, personally, Royce Freeman, very much on the bubble. Melvin Gordon is going to eat up his snaps. Philip Lindsay should get snaps similar to 2018. Personally, I'd keep Bellamy on the roster and cut Freeman. So not uh, – not a huge believer in the Denver Broncos 2018 third round pick there, Zach. It's another guy who the current administration, meaning the coaching staff, has no loyalty to. I mean, they didn't, Fangio wasn't around when he drafted Royce Freeman. It's a whole different regime, it's a whole different era. And under Pat Shermer, they're emphasizing speed on offense, speed at wide receiver, speed at tight end, speed in the backfield. They want more, more well rounded, versatile players. And I liked Freeman a lot his rookie year. He was a better player than Philip Lindsay until that ankle injury. Then he got Wally pipped, and it, it was all downhill from there. But he doesn't offer much. He's a two-down running back. He doesn't play on specials. He doesn't really move the needle. So if Bellamy has a good summer, I can absolutely see Freeman being left off the roster. I want to grab this here from Dave on Facebook. He says, my second live show in two days. I really enjoy it. I normally listen on a delay when I drive the big brown truck. Does anybody else see Daryl from Run DMC when you look at chat? <laughs> For real? That's a first, dude. You know, I've actually had this is really bizarre. Most of you, when I what I'm about to tell you, you're going to question. You're going to be like, "What, really?" Better than the kicker, though, Chad Blankenship. That's true. That's a recent thing, right? <laughs> Rodrigo from Georgia. That's that's an MHH staff uh, inside joke. But this has happened to me mo- mostly when I was younger, but multiple times people that I don't know, like it happened at drive through windows. It's happened at the counter, checking out or whatever. People saying that I look like Jim Carrey. Of all people, that I look like Jim Carrey. Now, I'm older. I'm probably a little bit rounder now in the jowls than I was back then. I don't know what people saw because I've still to this day, no one that knows me uh, in my personal life or whatever, whenever I've told them that, they're like, really? Yeah, we don't see it. So I've heard Jim Carrey. I've heard Rodrigo Blankenship. <laughs> now you got Daryl. Daryl from the MC. That's a first, dog. Yeah. All righty then. All righty then, indeed. <laughs> All right. Let me see what else we got here. Uh, are you speaking to us on this, King Gummy Bear One? What is the name on Twitch? If you're talking to MHH, it's simply Mile High Huddle on Twitch, my friend. Uh, Christy's saying there's some problems on the Super Chat. Hopefully that uh-huh. resolves. It's all good, though. 
Uh, appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Cody wants to know on Facebook, how deadly can the Lindsey Gordon combo truly be? I think it could be scary for opposing defenses. I feel the media is trying to create a beef between them, even though it's all cool personally. Now, Zach, perhaps that's a, and no offense, Cody, maybe that's a a veiled criticism, even if it's Freudian in nature and he doesn't realize he's being critical of our takes on that particular situation. But I don't think the media is necessarily trying to drive a stake or, or a, you know, wedge between those two. Lindsay literally came out and said he wasn't happy with the signing. He's going to use it as motivation. Those were his words. When, when you're a young ascending player who saw the rookie deal, who's performed way above expectations, who has a, a child now, who has a life of his own, and they sign a rival player to a $16.5 million contract, that would make you, that would make me, that would make everybody else have that chip on their shoulder. It would make everyone else have the same thoughts. It wasn't the media. It wasn't It wasn't anybody else but Melvin Gordon coming in and the Broncos signing him that created that division. Obviously, it's not as maybe as impactful as some of us want to think it is or do think it is, but Lindsey, it did not sit right with him, and I think he's going to use that as motivation. It's not a media-created theory or notion. It's a fact which Lindsey admitted. Amen. Ed, we're jumping in, one of our superstars. Good to see you again, as Thank always, you, my friend. Hopefully, things still going good for you on your potential move to the Mile High City. He says, Locke is going to make the Honey Badger look like a lost child. Denver Broncos for life, hashtag state of being. Yeah, I mean, it would be cool to see that kind of friendly rivalry continue to build and grow. But, uh, you know, first things first, Drew Locke's got to beat the Chiefs, or at least he's got to score a touchdown against the Chiefs. And again, that game, there were so many outliers about it that you know, there's it's just hard to form any kind of analysis that you can really project forward on because of the snow, because of just where it fell on the schedule, because of Arrowhead, Locke's, what was it, his third career start. So hopefully this year, though, he can get uh, – he can put the Broncos back on the map in terms of that division rivalry – and steal one of these wins. Hopefully, it's the one in Denver, so the fans can celebrate it. But he's got to get he's got to get a W against the Chiefs, and then it can really become a rivalry once again. Maybe it's because I really like and respect Matthew as a player, or I respect what the Chiefs have done. But I'm more excited to see Cortland Sutton just moss Chris Harris Jr. against the Chargers. I'm really excited to see Jerry Judy take it to that secondary. Obviously, we all want to see the Broncos beat Matthew and the Chiefs, but his comments don't ruffle my feathers like a Raider player or a Chargers player would. Manny Wise wants to know who could the Broncos have brought in at running back instead of Melvin Gordon that was available. No one. Well, draft him. There were uh, right. draft the guy. If it was all right to answer the question though, straight up, Todd Gurley was a free agent. Derrick Henry was quickly taken off the market when Tennessee franchise tagged him. There's a few other running backs, or at least one other running back, I'm escaping me right now that was franchise tagged. But it was a kind of limited list, and it's just not a position that you want to invest money in on a second contract, unless. It's one of your own guys because you know exactly what their injury jacket is. You know how they fit within your scheme. You know better than anyone else whether they're worthy of that investment. But as our uh, MHH analyst, Thomas Hall, he had an article on it leading up to free agency about how unwise it is to invest in a running back with a second contract on the free agent market. And then what do the Broncos do? They go out and they give Melvin Gordon $13.5 million guaranteed. So, we wish that if it was that big of an issue, issue to them that they would have utilized the draft. Like, I mean, look what the Chiefs did. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Yes. Uh, the rich get richer. Right. Like The Broncos could have gotten that guy. You have a plug-and-play receiver out of the backfield plus a phenomenal runner ready to roll, and it's at a fraction of what it's going to cost to roster Melvin Gordon these next two uh, years. And he has more upside to me and more of a well-rounded skill set, at least uh, in terms of a ceiling, than someone like Melvin Gordon. Manning, I think reading your comments, I think we just we disagree on a lot of topics, but 
I wouldn't, I've said it in January, I said it in February, I said it in March, I wouldn't have signed a running back. You have Philip Lindsay, you had Freeman, in hindsight they landed Bellamy as an undrafted guy. Just take a guy in the middle round, you want to catch passes and spell who I think is your franchise running back in Philip Lindsay. But this is a topic, Chad, that causes so much divisiveness in the Broncos <laughs> fan base. You and I didn't like the Melvin Gordon signing his contract anyway, we still really don't, but it seems like a lot of Broncos fans do, and every time we bring that up, it just causes way more bad backlash that I think would naturally come from it. But the the things that we criticize about that move have almost nothing to do with the player itself. It has to do with the value and the wisdom of paying a, that top of the market money to a running back on a second contract coming from a different team. That's that's what we question. And hopefully it all works out and this offensive staff can can weave it all together and put to put something out on the field that is dynamic and no one's worried about how much money, you know, Melvin Gordon's bringing in, but that's the thing we we never liked about it. Jay wants to know with a $2 super. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. How do I get a wrench? Hashtag Denver Broncos for life. So speaking to, of course, Buona Beast, the wrench that is next to his, his handle on YouTube. You know, it's, uh, it's an organic process, Jay. That's all I can tell you is that, you know, it's just the way things have always kind of rolled with MHH and the way our staff has come together is, you know, the football universe puts people, you know, together in a sense. And and it's just a completely organic thing. Like with Buona Beast, he is, uh, you know, he's a moderator on our, on our channel. And he has some other responsibilities that go along with doing that. He willingly accepted those responsibilities. And Zach and I are, are finding ways to uh, work him more and more into what we do with the podcast. Yep. And it's just a good fit, you know, and it, it's not something we can do with everybody. Obviously there's uh, we, we can't bring all of our great listeners on board as staff, but I think it's also the silver linings act for people is that, you know, like James Campbell, for example, another guy that is borderline MHH staff, what he does on Facebook for us. And then also how active and engaged in the YouTube community as well with the podcast is just, these things happen organically. And right. all I can tell you, Jay is just keep showing up. Right. Just keep being you and and uh, we'll keep you in mind as this thing continues to grow. Exactly. Just keep hanging in there. Keep uh, grinding away. And hopefully, shall we can open this process up to more of our listeners and have more moderators and stuff like that. So there's good things to come, Jay. So just stay tuned for that. Keep watching. What's up? 12 wants to know, do you guys think Justin Sternad can take Dod, uh, Todd Davis's spot at some yes. point? He has the athleticism and brings good coverage skills. Your answer is that. I think he will take his spot. He can, and I think he will take it by midseason if and only if he stays healthy and, and, and catches it up to speed with the Fangio defense. It's not easy for a rookie player to learn, especially for a linebacker, but if he can just, you know, that college skill set translate to the NFL, I think it's only a matter of time before he's starting next to A.J. Johnson and the Broncos finally, finally have that young, dynamic ILB duo who can cover the Kelseys of the world or at least hang with them. He's one of those rookies that we tapped on yesterday's pod responding to a question to be a potential dark horse to steal a, ro a starting spot by season's end. We included also Michael Ojemudia, the, the DB, Justin Sternad. I don't, I think it's a little too early to tap McTelvin a Jeem for that. I'm thinking also uh, Derek Tuska, not really. So those are the two that keep an eye on and, Sternad, I mean, he models his game after Darius Leonard of the Colts. And if the Broncos can get even half of that level of right. production out of him, it'll be a home run pick. So, and uh, let's grab Derek here jumping in. $5 super. Thank Appreciate you, you, Derek, one of our superstars. He says, hey, guys, I missed yesterday's pod, and my wife was furious. Our question is, you got to keep the missus happy, dude. Happy wife, happy life. You know this, man. Our question is, do you guys think K.J. Hamler will start over – Deshaun Hamilton at the slot position. Zach, no my answer, and thanks again for the super, Derek. My answer here is if K.J. Hamler is the person character-wise and between the years that, that the Broncos believe he is, it's an almost virtual guarantee he's going to be the starter in the slot. But if he comes into camp with any kind of sense of you know entitlement or yeah. his work ethic is not what they thought it was going to be or whatever – You've got a very accomplished and polished route runner in Deshaun Hamilton that forged a bond with Drew Locke down the stretch, and he might be able to utilize that to kind of keep Hamler off the field more than maybe the Broncos initially intended. 
But that's where the competition aspect is going to come into play. If I'm answering that question straight up at this point, I'm saying yes, but it's not a guarantee. It's an, I can see an injury happening or he doesn't acclimate like you said, Chad, but K.J. Hamler is the only one that can stop K.J. Hamler. If he if a second-round pick cannot beat out Deshaun Hamilton, who was dropping passes left and right last year, everyone, most Broncos fans, I should say, wanted him to be cut, wanted to be gone. The Broncos invested two premium picks for wide receiver. If he can't beat out Deshaun Hamilton, what does that say for K.J. Hamler? I mean, maybe initially he'll be worked in slowly in three wide receiver packages, but for the long term, there is no question he is your slot guy of the future. Hamilton, I hate to say it, is a number four wide receiver. That's his ceiling in the NFL. Joseph jumping in on Super Chat as well with a $5 Super. Appreciate Thank you, Joe. Joseph. Says uh, Freeman will be on the 53. He's a big back and caught on with Drew Locke pass catching the last few games. Love listening. Awesome, Joseph. We really appreciate you being here with us and listening and contributing like that. I mean, that's one of the things that some of these second and third year players have going for them is, you know, they've already established a little bit of a bond with Drew Locke and none of the rookies yet have even had a chance to scratch that surface. So it'll be interesting to see how much that helps some of those guys, including Royce Freeman. I, I would say it's uh, a 60-40 in, in his advantage right now. He has the leg up in this running back competition, Chad. But like you said, he, he would really have to fall on his face for to lose that, but it can happen. Again, very limited skill set, two-down player, doesn't offer a lot as a receiver, doesn't offer much as a runner. Bellamy is quicker. He was handpicked by this coaching staff, including Pat Shermer. He can be beaten out for it, but he has experience and draft pedigree on his side, and that can keep Bellamy, a younger player, a younger undrafted player, at bay. King Hicks jumping in with a $5 super. Appreciate you, Thank my you, friend. Man. Just want to show my MHH family some love. It's a blessing to be among the greatest fans in the league. It's a true honor. Smash that like button. Best. That's fans. what we're talking about, baby. Thank you, King. Best fans. Appreciate you, my friend. And uh, we love it. We appreciate you. Stony Neff didn't know that Bad Religion <laughs> is my favorite band of all time. Yeah, that's Bad Religion. That's the. That's where I'm coming from, dog. That's all I really listen to is 90s skate punk. And bad religion, of course, they're the they're the godfathers of that genre. Buona Beast, gently reminding everybody, remember, give a quick like. And if you're one of the few that is not subscribed, it would be appreciated. Go to milehighhuddle.com. Keep the conversation going with us, you guys, at milehighhuddle.com in the comments, in the community section. Um, more and more of you have been taking our call to action on that topic up, but uh, we could use more. We could use all of you hanging out at MHH. Not MHH.com, milehighhuddle.com. Ron Dub, speaking of Super Chat Superstars, jumping in. $10 Super. It's Thank good you, to Ron. see you, my friend. Thank you. He says, what's up, fellas? Which rookie and second-year player on offense and defense, so four players, will have the biggest impact on this upcoming season? Ooh, this is a fun one. I say Locke, Cushenberry, Jones, and Ojemudia. What say you? Draymond Jones, Michael Ojemudia. That's a really good question. So, Zach, you take the two – a rookie in a second year on defense, and I'll take a rookie in a second year on offense. Hmm. I got to agree. I think Draymond Jones, among the second-year players, Chad, I really can't think of a guy who has more – potential and opportunity among the defensive, even with Jarrell Casey and even with Shelby Harris returning. I'm gonna, I'm not going to – it's not a cop-out. I agree with Draymond Jones. Um, a rookie, as much as I don't like Ojemudia, he, he fits this scheme. I, I would say a gene, but there's not really, you know, high-round rookies that I can name. I'm going to go Michael Lowe, I guess, on defense for a rookie player. If he just pans out the way Fangio sees him, he has the potential to be a really good starting caliber cornerback. I mean, the only options defensively you have to work with within Ron's qualifications are Draymond, Justin Hollins, the fifth round pick. Yeah, it's, it's not much. Malik Reed, an undrafted rookie. I'm trying to think. I think after Justin Hollins, it was only the wide receiver from CU. So um, for me, I would, it's definitely Locke is one of them as the second year guy. And as far as the rookie having the biggest impact, it's got to be Jerry Judy for me. I think that he's really going to help take this offense to the next level. And, Ron, dude, that's a next-level question, bro. Thanks for making yeah. us think a little bit and getting creative, man. Props I, to you. I love questions like that. 
Tanner jumping in with a very generous super wow. chat. And Tanner, you, Tanner, I don't recognize you, dude. So welcome in. And we appreciate you uh, showing some love like that. And it's good to have you. If you're on Twitter, make sure you reach out and connect with us. Let us know who you are so we can shout you out, give you some love ourselves on Twitter after the podcast. He says, hope everyone is doing well. BC for life. BC, Broncos country for life. Amen, bro. Good to see you. There's Stu. You can count on him as he, as long as the – what is this? The day is long as the sky is blue. Stu McPeak in the stream every single podcast. Like, honestly, Zach, I can think when since we started doing every single podcast as a live stream, off the top of my head, I can think maybe two or three pods. I'm probably off a little bit that Stu has not been in the stream for. Yeah. And of course, it has, you know, something to do with something in his personal life or his professional life that he probably can't control. That passion, that dedication, that commitment to what we're doing here in the community, Stu, I hope you know. It does not go unnoticed by us, and it just blows us away. We appreciate you, bro. Among the Mount Rushmore chat, he was the first face up there. He was the George Washington of the Huffle. (laughs) That's right. He's the G-Dub. We we might have to make a a T-shirt just for Stu, the the George Washington of MHA. Appreciate (laughs) you, my friend. Speaking of superstars, uh, Terry up in Canada, proving that, as always, Broncos country is not a geographic location. It is a hashtag state of being. Appreciate you, my friends. Good to see you. And then also, Glenn, it's been a minute. Good to see you, my friend. I guess it's not been a minute since I see, I've see i seen you in the stream, but we really appreciate the, uh, appreciate the super Thank chat, you, Glenn. Even with all the uncertainty, it has been years since I was so juiced for a season to start. Who do you see as possible surprise cuts who don't make the roster? I think, Zach, Royce Freeman – shouldn't be a surprise to anyone anymore, but in terms of it being a storyline, if he does end up getting cut, it's going to be one of those big stories that come out in the summer. Royce Freeman, I would put Demarcus Walker on that list as a possibility. I would even throw on, even though I don't necessarily see it happening, I would even throw on guys like Deshaun Hamilton, like yep. Tim Patrick, uh, Juwan Winfries. Who else? Um, Hireman, but, but they're not really surprises. Yeah, That's right. Right. Uh, some one or two Tom of those. Davis, that's that's one that guy. would be a surprise, and it would make a little bit of sense because if Sternad stays healthy and rises quickly in camp, Broncos could save five million bucks on the cap this year if they could live without Todd Davis. So that's a lot of money something too. to uh, keep an eye on. Yeah, and you know what? I don't see it happening. But among the surprise cuts, most of these cuts we named, Chad, with the exception of maybe Freeman Hamilton. Uh, so Tim Patrick, they're fairly obvious. But Todd Davis, if he underperforms or Sternad really develops like Chad and I think he will, it can definitely push TD off the roster. And hopefully that day will come relatively soon. KP jumping in as well with the $5 super. Thank you, Appreciate Kevin. you, brother. Super chat superstar. He says, we're going to pound it in the new Raiders black hole. <laughs> okay, all right. We can't say that. <laughs> we can't say that. But um, Florida Appreciate strong, it. hashtag state of being, KP. Uh, yeah, dude, it's going to be – they're going to have the means to to ground and pound. No pun intended. Absolutely, my friend. Jedi Josh jumping in. we got a little hat coming your way, my friend, as you know. Was it a hat? I think it was a hat. we got some piece of swag coming your way. And uh, Jedi Josh is a longtime listener of the Huddle Up podcast, longtime supporter, great follow on Twitter as well. He says, you guys think they may start camp a week or two early? If things are looking good to compensate for the loss of OTAs, I don't because unless they came together with some kind of amendment to the, to the uh, CBA, I'm not sure the players union would be down for that would allow that to happen. So if they could get some kind of a dialogue and temporarily amend the CBA, maybe, but I just, because of those obstacles, Zach, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't see it happening either, but it's interesting that I, th- I believe it was Notre Dame, the school, the actual you know academic part of that school, they're actually starting the semester, the fall semester, two weeks early and ending by Thanksgiving. Whether that's to brace for a second wave or for whatever reason to get people back in the building, I don't see that translating to the NFL, but I do know a lot of sources, depending on who you read, will predict a second wave coming. And if the NFL, they haven't panicked, they're not the NBA, they're not the MLB, if, but if the NFL would foresee that happening, then they would discuss it. But it's going to be, I think, business as usual, September through February. 
Randy, I hope you don't have one of those micromanaging bosses that's always looking over your shoulder type thing. If so, dude, you better be smart about watching the pod live during uh, during work. But, you know, we appreciate you. And it's always cool to hear how and where people enjoy the show. Uh, all right. Let me see here, guys. Let's grab a few. Where are we at? We're at 49 minutes. Let me grab a few non-supers. We don't want to neglect anybody here. Then we'll finish up with all of our awesome superstars. Here's Cobra Commander saying, Zach, I 100% agree with Sutton killing Strap Harris. I was just thinking that yesterday. I want to see Chris Harris blame his new cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's going to be turning around and blaming Derwin James constantly. I cannot wait to see the meltdowns they have in that secondary. And if it does happen, it would prove the Broncos made a wise decision cutting that bad apple. Regardless, though, Sutton terrorizing Chris Harris Jr. will be a sight to behold. I literally cannot wait for those matchups. Amen. All right, let me just see really quick here. We went from Glenn was our – I just want to make sure the stream didn't jump anybody here. Bear with me one sec, you guys. I have to usually do this at least once during every live stream, so just bear with me. All right, let me just check something here. So jump from Glenn to Duke Rose. All right, so I got a few I got to put in the stream here. Um, while I do that, let's grab – question that's non-super up here um from Wyatt DeLong he says not really a question but sounding off he says I can't be mad at the Gordon signing he's a good player yeah he had a down year but he can get to his old form but I'm mad about Lindsay not getting paid which is that basically echoes what we say I mean, you can disagree about Melvin Gordon, but I think everyone can admit the Broncos, either significantly or, or minor, they overpaid for Melvin Gordon. It was too much. Everyone, national media types, Broncos fans, Broncos media, they all say the same thing. He's a good player who can help out the backfield, help out the Broncos offense, but they did overpay $13.5 million when they already had a Pro Bowl running back on the roster with a coach and a coordinator who values and utilizes one running back systems. There's no question about it. He was overpaid. All right, Terry jumping in here. Let me grab his super showing uh, some love and saying, push the like button, you guys, and subscribe, especially our, our viewers on YouTube. You got to make sure that you're also subscribing. And there are benefits that come with being a subscriber because you get notified if you click the notification bell every time we go live and a new video uploads. So you're going to want to check that out. Kyle jumping in as well with a $5 super. Appreciate you, you my friend. He says, Kyoto now. Great stuff as always. Uh, look, dude, just so you guys know that I'm not, I'm not a poser. Hold on. There it is. Kyoto Now is a uh, Bad Religion song. Kyle, it's good to see uh, we we share some of the same interests. That's very cool. Justin Statler jumping in, J-Bone himself with uh, that's what he says here real quick, guys. Bear with me. Sorry, I got to do this. This is one of the things that eventually we're probably going to have Buona Beast doing so it doesn't bog down the pod. Justin, let it breathe, baby. Hashtag let it breathe. Thank Indeed. You, we got to let it breathe sometimes, you know, things need sunlight, things need air. And then we got to grab uh, Mike here and then we'll grab Duke. Bear with us one sec, you guys. As you can see, this is why we need a little bit of help on the pod so that Zach and I can just focus on giving you guys the analysis. We need a producer in real time. Uh, Mike Evans jumping in $5 super. Appreciate Thank you, Mike. Bro. He says, appreciate y'all. Any hope Todd Davis will improve his pass defense in 2020? Tired of tight ends killing us, Zach. Is it going to magically happen? Am I going to magically wake up a millionaire tomorrow? It's just who he is. He's not a great run, a linebacker in pass coverage. He's not going to magically become that. He's a great run thumper, great two-down player, but that's where it ends for me, Chad. I mean, his best hope of suddenly turning the ship around, and I say that in a relative sense, is Vic Fangio's zone-centric 
you know, X's and O's acumen being able to kind of camouflage his weaknesses a little bit. But that tape's out there, man. Fangio will have to come up with something new because that's what teams did down the stretch um, is they would force the Broncos into base and then they would kick a guy out wide, you know, run a, run a tight end or a receiver in motion and draw both Davis and Johnson out into the slot into coverage where they would just get picked apart. I'm thinking especially of like that Buffalo game. They did that a lot. Uh, against the Broncos so the scheme's the best hope but you just can't teach an old dog new tricks in it's most a, cases it's his seventh year seventh year players don't magically become better especially when in areas where they've been weak their entire careers it's not going to happen for Davis we have to hope they can just make do with him until Cernat takes his place Duke Rose showing some love uh big dogs not much though Thank it's all you, good Duke we're never going to ask you to do that we're never going to ask you to super chat when you do it, it blows our minds. We appreciate it. That's, you know, just being here for us is, is all, uh, all we ask for. So yeah. we really appreciate you, my friend. Thank no, you. no amount is too small to us. Each time it's just to us, it means everything. So um, appreciate you, my friend. Manny Wise, ask Clinton Portis about getting a new deal before his present deal was completed. The Broncos will never do it. Speaking, of course, to the idea of Philip Lindsay garnering an extension before the Broncos actually have to make that decision. And that's, again, going back to, I don't want to bog down the pot, but what saddened me about the Melvin Gordon deal was it just spelled curtains for Lindsay getting any kind of an extension. And to Manny's point, actually, that's what surprised me when John Elway kept that alive as a storyline because NFL teams, with very few exceptions, they don't pay a player until their back is up against a wall and they don't have a choice, Zach. And, so I don't know. It's we, we don't want to continue with down that path of constantly talking about that, but we share a brain with you there, Manny. I just don't understand what Clinton Portis has to do with anything. That was years and years and regimes ago. I mean, this is 2020. This is the here and now. And and you can like Melvin Gordon as a player and you can like Phil Lindsay. Those things are not exclusive, but you really can't deny the Broncos kind of overpaid for their workhorse running back. Colton. Showing some love on Super Chat. Really appreciate that, my friend. Thank you. Are we connected on Twitter? Um, seems something maybe I can remember, of course, typing your name in, but are we connected on Twitter? If not, reach out and let me know, Colton. He says, what do you guys want to see happen at left tackle long term? Colton, in a perfect world, let me tell you, in a perfect world, I'd like Garrett Bowles to play at a Pro Bowl level this year and pay back all of the investment the Broncos have put into him enforce that draft pedigree. I think from in terms of long-term benefit, that's what would help the Broncos out the most. That's not a bold prediction. That's not me, you know, showing my hand per se. I think that would be in the best interest of the team long-term. I just won't believe it until I see it. Besides that, Zach, having a more capable fallback option, I think would be the next thing. And even if it's not speaking necessarily to long-term, at least for the 2020 season. Uh, my preference long-term is getting bowls off the roster, not relying on Elijah Wilkinson and neither having a placeholder like a Jason Peters or, or Kelvin Beecham, Cordy Glenn for now to get the Broncos till next off season. Then they invest either uh, a fat free agent contract into a left tackle or more than likely draft one in the first couple rounds. That's a long-term plan. Bowles is not the long-term left tackle. It's not Wilkinson. Juwan James is the right tackle. Uh, long-term bowls off the roster, new guy in as soon as next offseason. <clears throat> Excuse me. Andy jumping in on Facebook. How amazing is it that Drew has a mentor in Peyton Manning? So do you guys believe as much as I do that Manning has a passion for the Broncos and wants the team to succeed and get back to the top? Yeah, I think Manning roots for his, his old teams, I think in both cases for the Broncos and the Colts. I think the recency bias of – the Broncos helps out in the fact that he's maintained also a residence in Denver and the fact that the Colts cut him, the Broncos never cut him. You know, the Colts, that's one thing that probably right. still chaps his hide a little is the Colts cut him, dude. Like for, for a guy like Peyton, that's a bridge too far. It might be unforgivable in the grand scheme of things, even though he might not necessarily let it come out and, and show and how he interacts with the team. And when they put in a call to him to come do an appearance or celebrate alumni or whatever, he's going to be there. They've got, I mean, it is the house that's, that Peyton built is Lucas Oil Stadium. Zach and I can attest, as you, anyone who's been there, you drive by and there's a statue of Peyton Manning right out front of the stadium. So he's got to tip his cap to both clubs. 
And it is cool to see him take an interest in Drew. And yeah. Drew, of course, you know, seeking him out tells you a lot about Drew's character and desire to want to improve. And while we're on the subject of Peyton Manning, guys, really cool Sports Illustrated. It's Peyton Manning week at Sports Illustrated. So there's going to be a lot of cool content coming this week at uh, SI.com and also, of course, MileHighHuddle.com because we'll be kind of regurgitating the cool stories that they're going to bring out from the vault of Peyton Manning's recruitment to Denver and some of the videos and podcasts and stories. So keep an eye out for that. You know, I don't think there's any question that Peyton Manning still has an affinity for the Broncos. He's around almost every single training camp. He's on the sidelines. He's watching the Broncos games. He admitted, I mean, he lives in Denver still. He admitted he still takes an interest in the Broncos. He won a title with them. I think as much as he values his time with the Colts and starting there and, and having a lot of records there. The Broncos are just as much in his heart. And Locke is fortuitous because not a lot of young quarterbacks have that direct lifeline, that direct path to working with Peyton Manning. This is Peyton freaking Manning. It's not a random quarterback. It, it, it's not Chris Sims giving instructions. It's Peyton Manning. Locke is absolutely lucky to have that. And to your point, Chad, it shows that he wants to be as good. He wants to be a franchise guy. He wants to be great. And that's why he's seeking out Manning services. Joseph jumping in to say on YouTube, when things get a little better, I'll donate to the channel. But I just donated 250 bucks to No Kid Goes Hungry, a very worthy cause. Indeed, it is. Indeed it is, and that should be, you know, if you're of a mind for that sort of thing, that should be the first focus. And, you know, there's a for us, there's a time and a place for that as well, as those of you who've been with us for a while now know that we put together in tandem with our awesome community a little fundraiser to help uh, relieve the situation that shall go unnamed back in, I want to say it was late March, Zach, we did that. might have been early April. But uh, props to you for trying to help out. That's really cool. And Christy, don't worry about it. It's all good. You don't you don't have to do – don't worry about Super Chat. It's okay. We just like having you here, as you know. Uh, Dave Darlington, Super Chat superstar, appreciate it. He says, you, sending a little love. Enjoy coming home to all Bronco talk after spending the day around Fader fans. Hashtag orange and blue always. Yeah, dude, I'm glad we can help you exercise those silver and black demons, dude. That That can't be fun. I can't imagine being stuck in enemy territory, looking at that, now and not in Vegas anymore, but just dealing with those Raiders fans and, and seeing the type that they come to the stadium. I couldn't live amongst them. So I, I give you a lot of credit, Dave, for that. Michaela jumping back in on Super Chat. You know, you don't have to do that, Michaela. She says, for missing yesterday's podcast, lots of love, fellas. Thank you. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much, Michaela. You know how much that means to us. Um, all right, bear with me. Manny just... Sh- Showing some love, wow. like a boss, you, dude. Bonafide superstar. We appreciate you. Very cool. Um, all right. Let's see. Where are we at? We're over an hour, so let me just mow through, guys. I got to wrap this up here. Don't want to miss out on any of the superstars. Antonio jumping in with a $10 super. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. He says, Chad, you told me to bring this question back after the draft. So do you guys think Drew Locke has enough firepower to win a shootout against Mahomes now? Hashtag Broncos country. Very good question. And Antonio, thanks for reminding us and bringing it back into the conversation. I think on paper he does. I think it's safe to say that there's enough. I mean, the Broncos are loaded for bear on this hunt. You know, by the way, that's something that used to get said around me. And I'd say loaded for bear. What does that even mean? Oh, well, if you go out on a hunt, right, you can load up for shooting birds and you have a shotgun, but that's not going to bring down a, you know, an elk or it's not going to bring down a bear. So you got to bring the ammo and the weapons that's going to take down a bear. If, you, if you're loaded for bear, that means you're ready for anything, right? So the Broncos are ready for anything on, on this particular hunt. And it's just a matter now of converting, Zach, that potential into the production on the field. Yeah, I mean, if you want to list the 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 Chiefs supporting cast versus the Broncos supporting cast, the Broncos are right up there on paper, upside potential, whatever word you want to use, but it comes down like it always does to quarterbacks. And right now, as much as we love Drew Locke, he is not as good as Patrick Mahomes. There is not a quarterback walking this planet right now who is as good as Patrick Mahomes. It's not... It's not me supporting the Chiefs. It's not me hitting the Broncos. That's a fact right now. If Law can be that level, then yes, they can win a shootout against the Chiefs. It is what it is. And Rick James jumping in with the $2 super saying, Nick Wright is a D-bag. That is all. Hashtag <laughs> every Broncos for life. 
Appreciate you, Rick. J Step jumping in, rocking Thank the you. MHH hoodie like a boss. Appreciate you, my friend. Who do you think benefits more from the draft already on the roster? I say Simmons, hashtag state of being. So who benefits more from, from the draft, this draft class that's already on the roster? Is that what he's saying you think, Zach? I think who's on the roster that benefits from the draft class? I might be wrong on that. It's true luck. A thousand percent is true luck. I mean, Simmons, if if that's what you're saying, Jay Stepan, if we're misinterpreting your question, I apologize. You can clarify. We'll try and grab it before we get out of here. But Simmons, I mean, yeah, give it, getting a corner and Michael Ojemudia definitely helps him. No safety being drafted, right. you know, that's bolsters yeah. his position on on the team and Kareem, you know, going into his second year. So if we're if we're getting that wrong, Jay Step, just holler back, dude. We'll keep an eye out in the stream. All right. Getting low here on time so if we don't get your questions tonight guys forgive us and we promise that we'll be back in the saddle wednesday night and we will try to get to you there let me get to the top here i did one of these jumps goodness gracious dale jeez wow that's incredible put you our minds dude yeah it puts me in a loss dale that's it's incredible thank you so so much for that humbling the dedicated members of the community know too that this isn't the first time that Dale has has uh, been that generous and just it blows our mind, dude. That's all I can tell you is we we appreciate it as you know, but it's just very humbling and we love you, brother. Hope everything's okay in Hawaii right now for you. I don't know how things are going <clears throat> with regard to the lockdowns out there, but I hope you're hanging in there. As you know, we got a little something something coming your way, but I still need to know how many are in the home, Dale. That's the last thing I think I asked you on our email thread. And I don't think you responded on that. And then I can get some stuff sent out. I want to get something for everybody in the home there. So uh, let me know. Re reply. He says, how is, uh, how's it going? My little faithful Chad and Zach. Great to make it live today. Can't wait to see Sutton Fant, KJ Hamler, Okway Bugan, Okway Bugan. I almost had, dude, I mastered it the other day and now I'm screwing it up. We'll just say Alberto <laughs> and Judy spread out on the field with Locke and the shotgun or 84 of them with a single back and Locke under center. Talk about stressing defenses. Yeah. Un, undoubtedly true. It's, it's really a smorgasbord. I mean, this is something that, you know, we talk about being loaded for bear, whatever, you know, turn of phrase you want to use. Drew Locke has no shortage of weapons, and Pat Shermer, Zach, has no short of a shortage of options in terms of how to attack opponents. If Drew Locke fails, which I don't think he will, it's not because the Broncos didn't enable him to succeed. They, they've dedicated their entire offseason behind building around their young potential franchise quarterback. And yeah, on paper, those weapons are going to cause so many nightmares for opposing defenses. Then you have the running backs and Gordon and Lindsey. Ellie makes the roster. They're, they're literally just loaded from top to bottom, and it's going to be exciting. Win or lose, it's going to be fun to watch this season. Dale, again, dude, we're just it just stuns me. We appreciate you so much, my friend. JD on Facebook, I've been meaning to get to one of your questions, my friend, so let me grab it real quick. He says, do you think our rookies, uh, chances of winning offensive or defensive rookie of this uh, this season, anyone have a good chance, basically is what he's asking. I think Jerry Judy has a good shot. I don't see anyone on the defensive side that probably is going to really vie for that. But uh, Jerry Judy, I don't remember what the odds are. There's some juice on that, but he's, you know, he's the 15th overall pick. He's up there as a real possibility, depending on how things jive with the with Locke and how quickly he can kind of get up to speed. Yeah, I think he has among offensive rookies the fifth best odds, and among the receivers, including Lamb and Henry Ruggs, he is, has the best odds of winning O'Roy. No one on defense unless uh, – uh, Michael O just balls out, which I don't think he's going to do to that extent. Or uh, Ajim, he's not going to ball out to that extent. So if there's anyone that's going to make the rookie of the year, it's going to be Jerry Judy. And you know what? Odds makers think it could happen, Chad. Discount audio and wheels. DA Dub jumping in with Super Chat Superstar. You. Appreciate you, my friend. He says, keep it up, fellas. I see Deshaun Hamilton having a good year, especially with Judy, Sutton, and Fant taking up so much attention from the defense. And KJ, our weapon, deep threat, well, open up Hamilton. Can't wait. So discount is seeing – and by the way, we need to eventually email me or something, dude, so I know your real name. Um, 
I know we want to say the name of your business as often as possible to help you out. That's nothing but good. <clears throat> but let me know what your name is at some point. That'd be cool as well. He's he's feeling it. He thinks this is all good for Hamilton, Zach. Could be. I mean, it could. Um, he could take this as what we compared it to with Royce Freeman with the running backs. He can take it as motivation and really secure a spot on the roster. I think that's another player. He, he's his own worst enemy. He's pretty safe for now. But if he falls on his face, he's going to be facing the unemployment line. So it's one of those training camp battles to watch, Chad, as the months progress. Uh, Junger not just hopped on from YouTube. He's on Twitch to give you guys my Twitch Prime sub, but I can't. I don't even know what that means, dude. Yeah, I, I think it's how Twitch streamers monetize their channel, but I am so ignorant of how to utilize Twitch that uh, I, I I recognize we recognize you tried to do something cool for us, my friend, but I don't even know what that is. I'll have to maybe maybe you can send me an email. It'd be very helpful, actually, if you could email me what that even means, and I'll look into seeing how what we got to do to be able to accept a Twitch Prime sub. So reach out Mile High Huddle at Gmail if you get some time and uh, help a help a brother out. But we do appreciate you. All right, Zach, we're getting really. We're already past the uh, deadline, so to speak. So let's grab Angela, who proves, as always, Broncos country up in Canada. It is not a geographic location. It's a state of being. Very generous. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Angela. Uh, go Broncos, indeed. Uh, let's see here. Almost out of time. Don't want to leave anyone out in the cold. Here he's, he's giving me a clue here. It's just a free five bucks that I can give you every month. Okay. I see for Twitch Prime. Very cool. Chris jumping in, $2 super. A quick what's up, my boys? Dropping in a little late. It's good to see you. See you Chris. Better Thank late you. than never. Appreciate you. All right. One last pass through. Don't want to miss anybody. Um, there might be smalls. Smalls might work, Edward. We got this question. I want to say it was from Eclipse Stormborn asked us this as well about getting some merch for the kids. We haven't been able to act on that yet, but we will – have something up on the store here soon. And as soon as we do, we'll uh, we'll let you know when that is available. All right, one second. Okay, guys, that's got to do it for uh, today's episode of the Huddle Up Podcast. Thanks to each and every one of you for taking the time to join us live. A mile high salute to our Super Chat superstars. You know who you are. We appreciate you so much. And uh, Justin, DM me, dude. Let me know how it works. Uh, we follow each other, I believe, on Twitter. So just DM me and let me know or send me an email. I'd appreciate it on Twitch. Um, thanks again, you guys. We're going to be off tomorrow night, Zach and I, but we'll be back in the saddle Wednesday night, 615 Mountain, 815 Eastern. And then tomorrow night, you'll get Building the Broncos with Nick and Carl. And I'm sure they've got something juicy that they're cooking up for you. So stay tuned for that. And Zach, hopefully, to, you know, things start to pop and we kind of break out of this Monday sleepy spell as far as uh, NFL news goes, but have a great start to your week, my friend. You too, Chad. And uh, the facility is opening tomorrow and Drew Locke being back in Colorado. So hopefully by Wednesday, we have some more to talk about, but regardless, looking forward to it as always. And uh, we'll talk to you guys then. Amen to that. And just real quick, James jumping in right as we're getting out of here. Appreciate that. James as a Broncos fan, here is the problem. Are you not entertained? Even in the NFL is behind or in the pockets of politicians. That's a topic for another time, James. We'll uh, we'll we'll touch on that maybe when we circle back on Wednesday. We got a split for now, but thank you very much. Appreciate the super, and uh, have a great night, you guys. For Zach, I'm Chad. We'll talk to you again Wednesday night. Big thanks to all of you.